Uh, king of the slick up. Hey, call me Lord of the Chain, God of the wristwatch. Fashion be your movie. I'm quick, I just want to let y'all know we got Bose the Bambino in the building. He's one of the uh, upcoming battle rappers from out of the Carolinas. Been killing it, was on Ultimate Madness 4, made a statement, made it to the second round of the situation. Well, or was it the third round? Made it to the third round of the situation. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and uh, killing it on small leagues, went out to the UK. All I saw was Killed great things about his performance, yeah, and then he got into an unfortunate situation. And I'm going to let one of y'all professionals take it from there. What's up, y'all? Hey, Peace hey boys. Welcome. What's up? What's up, London? How you doing, Miss Jen? How are you doing? That's that's the question. I'm tired in the motherfucker. I ain't even going to lie to you. You, would you want me to give a little recap or do you or not a recap but just kind of for anyone who's unaware of what's going on do you want to fill them in or, or do you want me to do that well i'll give them like a little precursor and then you can take it you feel me um awesome. first of all i want to thank everybody who you know i mean really been showing me love and, and helping me like y'all don't understand in the situation i'm in just positivity regular positivity and just uplifting words is is more than anything like niggas really think this, this situation is just about money that's that's not that's not the case you know just just the positivity like when 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 london jen called me every day and she check on me like my, my face light up because you know what i'm saying like mentally i'm just not all the way there right now with all the shit happening but um just a little just a little backstory of kind of like what i'm going through and how we got to this point um i got booked to come to the uk with two other my other brothers um zay and, and nate from charlotte um, we came out here and, you know, I didn't really talk too, too much to the league owner. I talked to him maybe once before everything because they um, had a better relationship and things like that. So I just wanted the opportunity to come out, out of the country and put on, you know what I'm saying, for my city, my state. Um, so when we got here, um, you know, I was kind of told some things would happen and just miscommunication. So um, anyways, the day of the battle, uh, which was on a Saturday, was July 23rd, the day before um, I had to book a return ticket because we did them separately, um, obviously, for cost of efficiency and shit like that. So I booked the ticket on Friday. After my battle on Saturday, I got off stage and realized my um, ticket was canceled. So, you know, I just decided to go ahead and try and buy another ticket. By that time, you know, my price had kind of doubled, you know, on the ticket. So I spent about 12 to get here and on the way home, um, the ticket that I originally bought was like a band or like 900 By the time I looked at it after the shit was canceled, it was almost $1,600. So, you know, just that money situation got kind of fucked up. Um, the return on that money was supposed to come back to me on this Tuesday. I still haven't gotten that back. Um, but after the battle and stuff like that, when I tried to book another flight, you know, the people I came with, they had already kind of had their flights booked. They were supposed to leave out at 4 a.m. Um, they did. When they did, I contacted the league and just let them know, like, listen, my, my, my flight got canceled, um, you know, like, I had to pay double kind of of what I had to pay to get here. So if y'all could kind of throw me something, you know, on top of that to help me out, I appreciate it. Um, they, they definitely cooperated. Um, Paris and Snoop and shit like that, they told me, you know, uh, we got you. Um, when I got over there, because I checked out the hotel to go over there with them, um, we sat down, we talked about it, we found a flight. Um, Paris did a great job of calling, you know, customer service and shit like that, trying to make make sure we got a corporate flight to get out of there. Um, in the middle of kind of all of that happened and I gave her my bread, which, which probably was like $1,200 and she threw some money on top of that as well to get me out of there. Um, in the middle of booking, she had a good idea of trying to like, you know, uh, go with a third party to go half off on a ticket so that, you know, we didn't, I didn't have to pay full price on it. Well, at the, at the time it was a good idea because what happened is we, we went with the third party. She talked to him on the phone. I mean, y'all y'all know the deal. You got people in your city right now that you can go to and get a ticket half off. You know what I mean? Like, shit like that. Everybody know that. So um, she talked to him on the phone. They, they had a little conversation and shit like that. And then, you know, I talked to him and let him know, like, listen, bro, like, please don't play with my money. I got to get home. I'm out the country. Um, long story short, a couple hours later, he ran off with our money, my money, and, and, and a little bit of her money. So we were shit out of luck. So I'm talking damn near $1,600 is gone. You know what I mean? So... Um, when that happened, of course, you know, she felt bad and, and I was a little upset cause my money was missing and shit like that. And then, um, you know, I just kind of told him like, I, I don't really have a reserve. So, you know, if y'all can give me my money back or find a way, then I'd appreciate it. And so they kind of worked on their end and, and all the league owners and shit like that and try to get it figured out. Um, it, I, I would say probably a day it took. And then once they gave me the money back, of course, 
this is day three of being out there. This is a Sunday. So all the tickets is triple now at this point. You know what I mean? Like they not they not pulling up as 19, 1800. They pulling up as 2300, 2400, you know, shit like that. So um, I, I, I was kind of short, you feel me? Like as far as the bread to get back again. So because the money and the tickets have doubled. So I called, made some calls back home. Um, I, I called the homies. Um, they threw me some extra bread. I ended up finding some more money and putting it on what I had. Um, I booked three tickets. I booked one ticket to, from Manchester to London. Excuse me, from London to Manchester to fly out because it was cheaper. I booked one from Manchester to Orlando, and I booked one from Orlando to Charlotte to get me home. Um, when I got to the to the actual gate to check in, um, the lady told me that the airlines had sent a message in the, in, the, in the computer saying that they needed to verify some details with my card information and shit like that. So I was like, I mean, it's cool. It is what it is. And she kept me on the phone for 30 minutes and made me and, and canceled the flight while I was on the phone with her. So then told me I had to rebook another flight. So I tried to rebook another flight. And of course, when I go back to rebook another flight, the ticket is gone and it's doubled again. So not only did I miss out on that ticket, I missed out on the Orlando ticket, which I spent $780 on. And then I missed out on the ticket from Orlando to Charlotte. That was another 450 So at this point, this is three tickets, four tickets down. It's the initial ticket that... I bought, bought to come back. This is the ticket to go to Orlando, Manchester, and the one to go to Charlotte. So all of these have been canceled. Now, a lot of people keep saying, oh, why didn't you get them to rebook the ticket? Why don't you, whatever. So I want, I want y'all to understand something. Local and international is two different things. When you fly local, it's easy to book a, to rebook a ticket, to put some miles on a different plane because it's so many, it's so much transportation going in and out of different cities. When it's international, you might have two planes that's going to one place in a week and then not go back there for another week type shit you know what i'm saying and i'm learning this obviously as i'm going so this is this is news to me but they couldn't just rebook me a ticket for the same day the, the earliest ticket they could have got me was 72 hours from that date and it was the same direct flight the ones that i bought before if i wouldn't have took the 72 hours and and they had anything else i would have had to go through four countries to get home it would have took me 48 hours to get home so i would have had two layovers 28 hour layovers in Istanbul or um, Turkey, and then I would have had another 16 to 18 hour layover, probably in Portugal. So it's just, it was a lot of bullshit going on. Anyway, after all of that happened, um, my money was gone. Obviously, the uh, you know the league had already got kind of gave me some money back for the shit that they lost. So I went to the U.S. Embassy um, and tried to get them to help me out. I tried to get a visa. I tried to get uh, approved for credits. And the person at the U.S. Embassy told me that I got three options. I could either take it up with the league that was scammed and, and all the shit that happened with them, which I did. I could either send them a list of five relatives that I contacted to try to get me home. Or the third thing, which is my mind boggling, he told me I could sell my phone to get home. He asked me what type of phone I had, and I told him an iPhone 13 Pro Max. This motherfucker told me, well, you could sell your phone, sir, to get home. And I said, are you shitting me, bro? Like, how am I contact anybody if I sell my phone? Like, that don't make no sense. You think what I'm saying? So um, I was at the embassy probably for eight hours didn't get seen at all. Then the next day I called the embassy, was on the phone with them for four hours. It still got no traction, nothing. I called Alma Adams back in Charlotte, back the Congresswoman in North Carolina. Nothing happened, didn't get on a call with nothing. So everybody telling me all these alternate routes and shit they wanna did, London could tell you and Paris and everybody in the league, we tried everything, bro. Everything to get me home and everything kept falling through ever over and over and over again. So the last time, um, once I left, at this time, I was already in Manchester. You know, I was away from London where the league was and everybody that, that could help me. So in Manchester, I had money for just one night in a hotel and I had money for one one-way ticket from Manchester to, to the States. And I spent that. When I went, it was about like, probably like $400, probably total three-something in pounds. When I went to the airport, I booked it through British Airways and I found out a list of things, a multitude of things booking through British Airways. I went there. I got to the terminal. I was there an hour and a half before to make sure I didn't miss my flight. After about 20, 30 minutes of arguing with people, they said the flight didn't exist there. It was at a different airport, but it was advertised to be leaving out of Manchester. It was advertised to be bought through pounds and it was advertised to be booked through British Airways. So that's another ticket that was canceled. After this, I talked to the supervisor of the, the airport of the information center. And he told me that in the last seven days, American Airlines, Delta, has canceled 60,000 flights and that British Airways has canceled 20,000 flights. After that, I tried to get the buddy passes through people that worked at the airports and shit like that. 
I was on the phone with six to eight, six to eight hours with some supporters that fuck with me, that called me, that was at the airport, that luckily had buddy passes, and they told me that they would not let them book it, no matter where it was coming from, Delta, American Airlines, or British Airways, because of something called embargo. That means they were trying to limit the traction and the amount of Americans traveling abroad and Europeans or or people foreign traveling abroad off of buddy passes. They were limited to 100,000 a month out of all the airports. So I couldn't get a buddy pass. So that kind of what brings me to this point now, just for everybody to know, I'm not a broke nigga. I didn't come up here with $1,200 that just, I couldn't buy a fucking plane ticket. That's not the case. I came up prepared and I also had to spend so much money in order to try to get home and all my flights kept getting fucked up or canceled and then we got scammed. Somebody ran off with our money. So it, this is not, I, I didn't even want to ask for help many times. A lot of people told me I should reach out. I should try to get help from the States and stuff like that. I'm not, people who know me and know my character know I'm not that type of nigga. You dig what I'm saying? So I, just, I, I appreciate the time, but I just had to kind of clear some of that up because that, that's not what this is. It's not just about the money. My problem and my issue that I want niggas to take away from this, bro, is the U.S. Embassy is pussy and they don't give a fuck about <laughs> it. <bro. laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> fuck, I'm telling you, fuck the U.S. Embassy, the, fuck Joe Biden. Fuck hey, listen, the, niggas, the, the views and expressions said here on this joint is by this nigga. <laughs> This nigga, this nigga alone that doesn't want to make it back, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I'm going to make it back, but well, fuck them, bro. Uh, because gonna go to the, the airport. He's going to sit down comfortably. They're going to walk up to him and say, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Diss you. <laughs> Did you say fuck us yesterday on this one? <laughs> crazy, bro, because, like, you know, a lot of people, you know what's wild, though? A lot of people have a misconception that don't really understand the U.S. Embassy. They just automatically think, oh, they over there. They're going to help you. You're going to be good. That's not how it go, bro. These niggas online talking crazy like, I would have went to the embassy. I would have did this. And you would have looked fucking stupid the same way I did. Went up there trying to plead for help, trying to get home. And they and they look at you and spit in your face like you stupid. Like, and tell me to sell my phone, bro. I really, I really could have went to jail over there because mm -hmm. that's wild to me, bro. That's okay, wild. So, so, okay, so I, so I got two questions, but... I got to ask the first one before I get to the second one. The first one is, do you see any uh, conclusion? Are you are you closer to a conclusion with your situation right now? Yeah, so so after earlier, you know what I'm saying, Caps called me um, kind of when I was I was at a real rough time. So I don't know I watch, and I, I don't want to seem insensitive to anything you just said, but I watched the whole Caps joint. So a lot of what you just said, I was letting you get off for the, for the people who hadn't heard it, but I had heard right. a lot of it. So I was like, I, yeah, I mean, I was just letting you rock. Yeah, no, nah, I appreciate that. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Earlier, I was a little bit more emotional because I was really hurting earlier. You feel me? Like, yeah. I'm talking about, like, when, when your bread is tied up, man, like, you can't do nothing out here, especially. And then the conversion rate is a lot of people don't understand that. Oh, I got $1,200. $1,200 ain't shit over here, bro. Yeah. $1,200 is $900 in goddamn British pound. Like, come on, bro. So, so don't do not do that. Like, the conversion rate, it, it was fucking me up, bro. Like, just with, I'm getting money from the U.S. I'm getting money from homies trying to, trying to keep me on my feet. And, that shit is just depleting because it's not equal over here. So, um, no, nah, but the shit, like, when I was talking with Caps, bro, like, um, I was just a little bit more emotional at the time. I had a lot of shit going on. But, you know, this whole situation, bro, it's not about attention. It's not about clout. It's not about none of that because I didn't want to do none of this. But the, the problem is, bro, like, niggas need to understand, like, what happened and, and what I'm blaming it on. Part of it, I do believe, like I said, maybe I could have been better with booking some of my flights. But at the end of the day, I did it like I've been doing it my whole life. You know what I'm saying? I did nothing no different this time. And it's always worked for me. So, you know what I mean? It's just, like mentally this shit just fuck with you because you you out the country. You don't know nobody here. You know some of the league. You know some of the people here. But at the end of the day, I just met some of them. So, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just hard, bro. Not knowing if you're going to see a family again. Not knowing if you're going to get back home. Like, it's a bunch of wild shit. And kind of like to, to, to talk about the league a little bit. Like, that people coming down on them, you know, I do believe that they messed up in some way. They did fuck up, but they they tried to fix it, and that's what matters. Like they didn't just leave me out here yeah. to say fuck. Bubbles. You know yeah, what I'm saying? and not, I not, not to uh, not not to not to necessarily cut you off, but what I still got that other question. But when you, when you just said the thing about you paying for your flight, you, it, it, that tells me you booked your own flight. So a lot of this situation, people are blaming on the league. It can. Can they technically blame it on the league, or is the league doing everything that they can in nah, I will the say, situation? Like I said, I don't talk. I talk to the league every day, bro. All of them. They they know what's to blame. What what they did wrong. Like I, I talked to one of the league owners before I left because I was under the impression that 
you know, I was told that coming up here in, in, in my contract that certain things would be taken care of, like transportation, like all food and hotels. And I don't know what happened. I think things kind of got put up, like, you know, hotels weren't, weren't done right. Like they, they, but they lost money on that because they booked the hotels. They weren't right. And they wouldn't refund the money to them for them to book us another one. Right. So we had to book hotels. And then with the food thing, like they didn't really provide the food. So we had to pay for the food. And then I was told that we would get something on our return flight, like, like to help us out since we booked our flight out there. But like I told them afterwards, like I didn't talk to nobody directly ex except for Snoop, which is, you know, I, I fuck with Snoop. He's good people. I I talked to Snoop and, you know, some of those details was confirmed and it just didn't happen up there. So I don't know if, if maybe things changed or something like something changed in the water. I'm not sure. But like I said, I, miscommunication happens all the time. So, you know, they know what they what they did wrong, what, what they can do better next time. And then obviously, you know, with the whole money thing like that, that was fucked up. Like she she understands and the league understands like, you know, they probably could have went about right. that a little bit different. But they did do what they could to get the money back up and give it to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's better late than never is what I say. Because, I mean, when they gave it back to me, yeah, the price is doubled. But they could have, it could have been two more days and the motherfucker could have tripled. So, you know, at the end of the day, every it, it, certain situations and, and things in this situation that could have been done better. But nobody left me out to dry. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day. And that's what I want everybody to understand. Like, people still called and checked on me. People wanted to see if I was okay. People, you know what I mean? Like. At the end of the day, of course, they didn't have more money to offer. They just had an event. They had to pay me back on top of already paying the artists, on top of paying for me to go or putting on money for me to so, get out so, of there. So, so, so you, you don't feel like they was financially responsible to, for the situation. They did everything they could in the situation I, thus far. I believe, I believe, I believe truthfully it's 50-50 because, like I said, with the whole miscommunication with the return flights and the miscommunication with the – with the transportation and food, like, I don't dwell on shit like that. Yeah, other battlers might be mad and spaz about it. Like, I just paid for my shit, bro. Like, but, uh, but, uh, but, but, uh, okay, so, but, but we got to, but uh, we don't want to pile on, we, we don't want to uh, confuse the two issues. Because it's one right. thing with running a league and, I'm a league owner. That's, that, we got right. regular league owner shit, and then we got getting you back to America shit. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm talking about as far as getting you back to America is it yeah. is it anything that they more they could have done? No. So they, I feel like as far as getting me back to America, they they did what they were supposed to do. I mean, okay. obviously, like I said, besides the like the league knew that that was fucked up. Like they the dude they they tried to go with a different route to get that tickets half off. It didn't work. They scammed us and they took all my bread because I put okay, most so of the bread. That, that that takes me to my second question right there. And I, I, I'm definitely not trying to cut you off, but I, I want to make sure I get it because, I, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm drinking a little bit, I'm smoking a little bit, and I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to, you know what I mean, hear from you, period, knowing that right. you're over there and, and, and at least kind of good spirits, right? But look, for future reference, this is a learning experience still. Mm -hmm. What would you do different and what can you prepare other people for that might be traveling over there? Yeah, you know I mean, especially people like you who who trying to make a name, who yeah, you know I mean, might not be getting booked by uh, uh to battle shoddy horror, but want to go yeah. over there and get that London experience and battle rap and shit. What can you, what what would you have done different, and what can you prepare them for? Um, I would say, man, when you when you get contracts and you get certain things, like stick to it. Don't don't just let shit kind of go to the wayside and, and kind of not say nothing about it. And I will also say, like, always have a backup plan. Where I fucked up, I think personally for me is that I have two bank accounts. I got a Wells Fargo account and a Bank of America account. I, don't, I didn't use neither one of those because they both got international charges. Hey, what's your, what's your account number, bro? Real quick, just for uh. Wow. Uh, hey, what the fuck? Hey, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Hey, nah, you wild for that? You put that nah, shit so out I, there like, nigga, I got money, nigga. I'm, fuck it. What's up? Where's that? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I got two bank accounts, but I didn't use them out here because of international charges. Like, they would have killed me with them shit. So I chose to use Chime because they don't have international charges. So, yeah. you know I mean? like, at the end of the day, stick with what you know, because I think part of that reason is why they stopped me and had security questions and all this weird shit. Like, it was just, it, it, it's a lot, man. But like I said, always have a backup plan. Stick to your contract. You know, if it's something's promised to you, make sure it happens. Um, and, and always have, always have a second and third option because I'm literally in this position, Henny, because my money's tied up. It's not because I don't have it. It's not because, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't prepared no, you're, for you're it. You're a battle rapper. We all know you could get that, you could get that back and 
one or two battles type shit. Like we we, we right. understand that. Yeah, yeah, right. But and, and that's but something like, that that's something that I gotta preach at, at a different time. And I, yeah, I mean, I, I your name should be currency everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no fact. matter what, your name should be currency. Hey, I'm Bose the Bambino. Get me a ticket home. I I yeah. got you. You know my name. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, a favor for a favor, Godfather shit. Your name should be currency but, everywhere you go. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, go ahead, though. My bad. Nah, but um, you know, just with that shit, bro. Like I. I got fifty one hundred dollars, bro, tied up with British Airways, bro. I can't lie to you about it. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Pictures, bro. Come on, bro. Fifty one hundred, and because and and Miss London Jim, would you please tell these niggas what an average ticket is for a a, a, a regular one way no stops from London to probably America? Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can't. I have been there. I have been there. It was almost twenty years ago. But um, I was looking today actually from London and from Manchester. You cannot get, I haven't seen a regular fight, no stops. The cheapest I've seen is one stop. They're averaging and they're going up. Over here, our summer holidays have just started. And when summer holidays start, prices double. And then they keep, you know, depending on demand. Um, so prices at the moment are in US dollars, like no less than $2,000. And you're talking um maybe one or two seats on those two thousand dollar tickets if you can get it now if not the next best one is 44 hours three stops and it's you know uh two thousand four hundred like and but that's kind of the average also one of the things that he's still got to potentially face is flight cancellations that's still a thing he's saying you know twenty thousand british airways fights uh sixty thousand um American Airlines, there is an international flight shortage. It's very bad in the UK. In the UK for months, it's been a regular talking point, point on the news about flight cancellations out of every UK airport. There are staff shortages and there, um, there's all sorts of, um, like you said, the, the US embargo. There's, there's other international things. Right now, Bose has just been really unlucky. Um, yeah. His two, you know, three of them came over, two went back with no problems. And unfortunately, you know, Bose has just been fucked. That's, for probably, that's probably a, a statistic. Like, like one in every three motherfucker to go over there got to deal with this bullshit. You, you know uh, I mean? And especially right now, I think where, where you've got the flight shortages plus the, the embargoes, you know, where people like um, Bose said that the governments don't, they want to, um, they want to uh, deter as many people from traveling, especially internationally while you've still got the pandemic and then there's this monkeypox thing going on. They're trying to limit as much international movement yeah. as possible. I'm gonna keep it. So, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. Uh, just me being unexperienced. I was talking to Anwar earlier. You know, right now, Bose, you wanted to talk to battle rap and shit. Anwar is one of them concerned type niggas. If he could figure something out, he would have loved to reach out to you. So we on the phone. He like, I'm like, what are you doing, dog? He like, man, I'm just looking up some flights and shit. Nigga literally was looking up flights, right? He was like, see, I'm looking in the flight. My wife from, was too. He was like, the flight from here to here. Then he was like, oh my, what the? F a one way flight from Manchester to 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 where he wherever he put in in America today, closest to where he got was ten racks. One the the, yes. the direct though, the direct. Yeah. To take mm -hmm. you straight here, close to I home. I couldn't even find a direct. A direct was I, ten. I said, "What the fuck?" Yeah. He said, "He said it out of his mouth." I was like, "What the?" F yeah, and, and this look, is not look, any this, exaggeration. That's what I'm saying. The wild shit is, bro. Like I, that's why you, when you got on me earlier, like, "Bo, just chill, stop arguing with niggas," because it's just funny that you see this shit. Like niggas yeah. always got a plan. They always got a solution of what they would do and how they would fix it, right? Man, some of these niggas are fold over here, and he on God. Because at the end of the day, bro, like like we said, we looking up flights. I'm talking, I click on a flight to go pay for it. By the time I put my last number on my mm -hmm. debit card, and that motherfucker said, oh, it's flight gone. Yep. The fare on this flight has changed. So I, this is a combination of just bad luck, bro, just miscommunication, goddamn, and me getting a short end of the stick, bro. I done took four trains, bro. And, the tra and, and, and every time I take a goddamn train to get to the airport, bro, Something happened. The flight had been canceled. I, I was in the airport earlier yesterday. I had these six, these six African chicks. They came over. I think they was either from Africa or Nigeria visiting the UK in tears on their knees, bro, because they couldn't get back home. You know what I'm saying? Like, these shits is not playing. The flight, I'm $5,100 in the hole with British Airways, bro. That means my first flight had to be damn near 16, 17. The second, third, and fourth one with all of those combinations was a combination of probably like 23, 24. And then my last one, what was, was, 
close to a band. So, yeah. and they all canceled. You feel what I'm saying? And guess what? URL stepped in. So shout out to KD. Shout, shout out to fucking Nina. I love them because they, they called me. They, they they did the woman shit, bro. They did the administrative shit. You know, us niggas, we be like, hey, man, fuck this. We just going to try to get his money up, book this ticket, whatever. KD was like, no, nah, send me your reference numbers. We're going to see if we can get in the, in the chat with these motherfuckers and get all your vouchers for all these flights, right? We was only able to get one out of four, which is insane. Nina called me. She sent me. They all sent me some bread, you know what I'm saying, to get right. And then they start trying to get me loans and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's just insane, man, with, with the amount of the cancellations and the money. Like, this shit has been hard, bro. I've never been through nothing like this in my life. And I have been through a lot of shit, bro. Being over here stuck in a country with nobody, not knowing nothing, scared, bro. I'm, I'm scared, bro. I've been scared for days, my nigga. And it's hard to admit that. But mentally, I'm not there, bro. I, I got to figure out how I'm going to bounce back from this shit when I get back. And that's real. You got this shit, though, man. I don't even like hearing... Don't even, I, I don't even like hearing you say that shit, man. I don't even like hearing you say that shit. We, you know what I mean? But look, though. You almost out the situation. And that's the most important thing. You know what I mean? And you see a lot of people supporting and care about making sure you get out this situation. And... Yeah, I mean, once you get here, like I said, you could be an example for how not to be put in this situation. Because there's a lot, anybody can say whatever, but it's a lot of aspiring battle rappers who want to go over there and they want to know how to move comfortable and shit like that. So they're going to be looking at shit like this to understand exactly how to move and what to do and how not to be in that situation. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. whatever. And, and for real, I ain't going to lie. I, I'm going to keep it real with everybody watching. I told them don't say shit because it's going to end up being an angle. Yeah, I mean, yep. I, I I told him that. Yeah, you know I mean, and he said, "Man, fuck it." Yeah, you know I mean, he put the shit out there because he feel like it's something that need to be heard. And I ain't mad at that either. I ain't mad at that yeah. either. Oh, the niggas can rap about it all they want, bro. But I tell you one thing: some of these niggas, if you put them in the same position when they came back from this, bro, and that's not even trying to toot my horn. It's just the way this shit. Like you can ask, you can ask everybody that's been in contact with me. Any, he like. This shit has been a struggle, bro. This shit ain't been, it's like nothing been easy about this at all. Like, especially when your homies leave 2700 dollars So well, you can't tell them to stay. You know what I mean? They are already spent them mere three racks on their tickets. So now I'm really over here just in the streets trying to get my own money up just trying to find places to stay <clears throat> shit like that so you know oh damn Finito, I, he's guess what, back. He, he dropped out but guess what though when, when when he get back and he decided to tell his story because battle rappers are some of the most creative writers in the world yeah, and and, was, and and he has a a, a a very great projection with his shit oh yeah it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be fire. I can't wait to hear that, man. Yeah, you know I man. I'ma bring him I'ma bring him back if he pull back up. Uh King of the slicked up. Hey, call me Lord of the Chain, God of the wristwatch. Fashion be your movie, I'm cool.